So, I'm trying to get my car loaded for the multicam shoot today. And it is pouring rain. So, I'm gonna put a tarp around my innovative cart and then I'm going to load it in here in the van with the tarp on so that way when I get to set I can just wheel my cart out and not have to worry about my stuff getting wet in the rain so yeah wish me luck okay so there's the cart loaded with a tarp so when I get to the chute, just gotta pull up the ramps and unload and not have to worry about anything getting wet. So for this project, I was hired as a cam op as well as uh, providing some extra equipment. And this was for a project at a local university. This shoot was with Appalling Productions, um, Paul Huenfeld. You guys have seen him here on the channel quite a bit. Uh, this was one of his projects and he had to um, hire crew for this one as well as um, he's doing the whole thing as far as pre post and all that so I'm not going to go into a lot of the details for this shoot I know Paul Huenfeld uh, will have a video out on his YouTube channel so I'll link his uh, YouTube in the description below I feel like half my time spent as a filmmaker because I do own and operate a lot of equipment is spent prepping equipment for every shoot I spend a couple hours getting equipment ready to go so that way when I show up on set I have everything dialed in I don't have to put in a memory card I don't have to put in a battery everything is ready to go and I feel like making yourself more efficient is sometimes more important than having the latest gear uh, because if you have the latest gear and you're not efficient it's just going to be a jumbled mess when you get to set and I feel like I'm always trying to improve my setup and how I can be more efficient on set. And I know people might look at my setup and think it's totally disorganized and chaos and chaotic. But this is what works best for me. I, If we're on a shoot and you need something, I can almost pinpoint where it would be. And I feel like it's definitely a work in progress for me. I'm not perfect at it. I'm still always trying to find better ways to pack certain things and what works and what doesn't and honestly there's no right or wrong way when it comes to this you just have to learn what works best for you so it's the following morning after the multicam shoot uh, that i had late last night and i'm just getting all the gear um out of the van i have to reorganize for another shoot but um yeah i want to give you guys a quick breakdown on what i brought with me but before I do that, I want to show you guys this uh, dual monitor system that I have going on right now. I have uh, picked up another Megamon OC 15-inch uh, director's monitor. Right now I have it on a triple, uh, triple header, but I'm going to look for a double header so that way I can keep them close by or close together on a uh, format like this and I'll have an A camera and a B camera um, connected wireless system to each monitor so that way if I'm doing like an interview I can have both um, both up on one screen this would be more for like a bigger budget um, interview type thing where they want to see both um, images up on screen and I don't have to switch back and forth and also I don't have to do it on my iPad because I do have um, a way to see multi cameras, uh, multiple cameras on my iPad, but this is just a little bit nicer having it on two um, color accurate screens like this. So yeah, I picked up another one of those. I also picked up a bunch of random stuff. Um, this is like an Apple box seat. I got a few of those. I just always wanted one and now you can get them real cheap on like Amazon. I'll leave a link in, in the description for that. But yeah, let me show you what I brought with me last night to the shoot. Um, I had uh, a ATEM system. The um, This is the, I think it's the uh, 
eight channel ISO extreme. And this is just the HDMI version, not the SDI. So we use this to bring in all five cameras. Then I have a bunch of like wireless systems in here as well um, that just live in this case. A couple more. We only had, we were only running two wireless. Everything else was uh, hardwired HDMI. And then these are just a bunch of HDMI random little accessories, some power supplies and all that. Um, in this case, then I did uh, bring some battery solutions, um, just a bunch of gold mount batteries. I, I don't even think we ended up using more than a few, so these should all still be fully charged. Yeah. Um, so I brought those, brought two uh, Sackler Video 20s, and then I brought two um, uh, FX3 packages already rigged out with tentacle sinks. Um, we ran tentacles into everything. Then I uh, brought another lens. This is the Sigma 150 to 600. Um, and then this is just a bunch of random accessory cables, just in case we needed it. Some uh, stingers, and then I did bring some HDMI cables that I put on the cart. But yeah, these are really thin uh, fiber HDMI cables that we used for some of the hardwire cameras. And that was pretty much all that I brought with me for this shoot. Um, there was a ton more gear there, but uh, this was just what, what I was assigned to bring. And it worked out really well. Um, the shoot was really smooth. We had plenty of time to set up. And it was, uh, the program was pretty straightforward. So wasn't a whole lot of thought that went into it on my side. I mostly just showed up with equipment and was ready to go. So yeah, quick, easy shoot. And then this morning I had, um, someone drop off some rented equipment. I rented this, uh, light out. This is an IntelliTech 485 bicolor with a Fresnel built in and all that. Um, it's pretty old at this point, but it, it definitely uh, does the trick if you need 485 watts. And it has a built-in for now and barn doors um, that you can use to flood or spot. So yeah, I rented that guy out. Um, also rented out some random grip and stingers. And then this is a Sennheiser microphone. Um, I forgot which one, not a 416. I think it's a MKE 600 with a little, um, blimp on there or a dead cat. And then I rented out some C stands and then a combo stand. So this rental was a little random. Um, usually I would rent out my 600 X and then some other stands, but th this is just all that I had extra. Um, that I wasn't currently using. So I also brought some Hollyland um, solid comms. These are the C1, I believe. Yeah, the C1 solid comms, and these work great. I have a five uh, five piece kit. Um, so yeah, uh, we needed to be able to communicate because Paul was uh, back at a director's monitor calling shots. Um, so it was nice being able to have that on the, the kit as well. Um, those came in handy for sure. I also picked up some of these, uh, they're called camera paddles. Um, I plan on using them for like some accessories here on the back of these monitors and they just make for really quick deployment. You can fold them down when you're not using them and transport. And then, um, when you want to use them, they just attach, uh, to these little cheese plates here. And then this will just make things a little bit easier, just being able to mount anything you want. I'm, I plan on putting some uh, Hollyland units here, so that way I can just quickly Velcro them, plug them in. Just saves a little bit more time. Like, I have these these mounts, and, you know, these are great, um, but, you know, you have to screw things in, unscrew them. 
And I once they're in, I don't really move the monitors around. So I think a little Velcro would be perfect. Um, and I can just quickly put that on there, take it off, replace the Velcro whenever I need to. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about those. I'll link those in the description as well. I picked up a few of these. Um, and they do have some other angled brackets. These ones were uh, just the flat, but then they have some angled um, brackets that you can get. But So I was not expecting this rig to look as smooth as it does. Um, obviously, there's still a little bit of shake, but we had the active stabilizer turned on on the A7S III. And yeah, as you can tell, like it looks pretty smooth and we're just going at a, a snail pace. Like it's it's pretty slow. So obviously, if we were going a little bit faster, we might pick up a little bit more jitter. But with not attaching a gimbal or anything like that and just having the camera on the the, the truck here, I was pleasantly surprised. So one thing I'm trying to standardize on my setups are uh, quick release plates. I have these um, three Sackler tripods is kind of like my main tripods. And I love these little touch and go plates. They're great. But um, the one thing is they're kind of outdated. And um, a lot of my other accessories don't um, use the touch and go. They use more of the standard Manfrotto plates. So a lot of my teleprompters and shoulder rigs and everything else is kind of um, standardized to these Manfrotto uh, plates, even this newer um, Sackler uh, Flotec tripod has uh, one of the Manfrotto. And I picked up these, they're made by Falcam, and they're uh, just these quick release plates that um, I've attached the touch and go on the bottom side. And I like these ones a lot because they're the um, quick you just snap in. You don't have to slide it in. It just kind of snaps into place. Um, like my Flowtech. So it's fairly easy to get it in and out. The one thing I've noticed is some plates work better than others. This one makes a good click sound, but some of them don't. Um, so not a big deal, but yeah, I'll link these in the description. I got to pick up another three or so. They're a little bit pricey. I think they're like 80 bucks. Um, so for what it does, that's kind of pricey, but, um, yeah, I like the idea of having everything standardized to these Manfrotto plates. I think it'll just make my life a lot easier. Also picked up these 45 degree grids for my um, my tube lights, my Amaran tube lights. Um, I need to get another 45 degree for my four foot tube. But I got two for my two foot tubes. So these were kind of long overdue. Needed these for sure. 